So I'm eight years old and I'm sitting in my third grade classroom in some small town in Connecticut. It's at the end of the school day and we just finished doing an art project and I'm feeling pretty proud of it. The intercom comes on. Hello, please send Benjamin to the main office. His grandmother is here to pick him up. I'm feeling pretty surprised because I normally take the bus home every day but I gather my things and my grandmother greets me with a warm hug and smile, all excited. And as soon as we exit the school, she swiftly turns around, crouches down and asks me, Benjamin, do you know who that man is over there? She's pointing to some man who's maybe 15 feet away, who's just leaning on the side of the school building in the shade. Um, no, but I do have this great picture. Benjamin, do you know who that man is? No, mama, I don't. That's your father. That's the first time I'm meeting my dad. I'm frozen, I'm kind of scared. I'm also really excited because I've basically thought about this moment my entire life. Every birthday wish was basically, I wish I had a dad, I wish my dad would come back. Because according to my mom and grandmother, my dad just ran away and nobody knows where he is. I mean, even my seventh day, my seventh birthday party, I wrote a letter to God, asking for my dad to come back in hot pink crayon color, <laughs> made my mom tie it to some red balloon, and when everybody left, her and I went outside at night and we just watched the balloon fly away. And now here I am looking up at my dad, this man with a beard who has glasses just like me, who has a baseball cap on and has a button-down shirt, and he seems really genuine when he's greeting me. Hey, hello there, Benjamin. It's nice to meet you. I'm feeling really shy, really awkward. I think I'm gonna faint and pass out, but I can't because what if this is my one moment to see him? I need to stay with it. I need to be brave. Hi. After this awkward family reunion, we immediately go to my grandmother's house. My grandmother hasn't seen her son in almost eight years, so she's catching him up on all the joys and all the glories of the family. At some point, my dad and I go to the backyard. I'm showing off my bike skills and we're just racing back and forth. And all I'm thinking is, this is the best day of my life. My dad has come back and he's playing with me and he likes me and I really like him. And I wish we could do this every day. And then I hear an all too familiar sound of a car engine. And I know my mom is home from work to pick me up. I drop everything I'm doing with my dad I race around the house and I can see my mom in the parking lot talking to my grandmother. My mom is this beautiful woman who's always laughing when she talks and right now I can see her expression is somewhere in between paralysis and horrified. I run next to her and I grab her hand. Mommy, it's okay, he's different, he's nice. Needless to say, my mom needed a lot more convincing than that. <laughs> my begging and pleading to spend the night at my dad's hotel that evening did not work. And I'm just left thinking, is this it? Is this the last time I'm gonna see him? But it wasn't. Over the next couple of weeks, my dad kept making guest appearances in our life. One morning especially, my mom and I wake up to somebody knocking on our door in our apartment complex. And sure enough, there's my dad holding some McDonald's breakfast meals with three cups of orange juice. My grandmother kind of let him know where we lived. <laughs> We're sitting around our kitchen table and I'm learning very quickly how much of a go jo jokester my dad is. He's making us laugh and I can see my mom chuckling and her defenses are slowly going away. And now I'm having different thoughts. How often are we gonna do this? Are we always gonna have breakfast together? Are we gonna be a real family? Over the next month, my dad kept com keeps coming back and I'm following harder and harder with this idea of him being around forever. On one particular day, we're all in the kitchen of my grandparents' house and my dad says he has some announcement to make. I'm not really paying attention because adults are doing adult things. I'm just trying to find peanut butter and a spoon so I can sneak a snack real quick before anyone notices. Mm -hmm. But I'm realizing it's getting really quiet and I turn around and I see my dad getting down on one knee and he's pulling out a box with a ring in it. I see my mom's expression. It's kind of nervous, but she's smiling. My grandparents are hovering around in the background, very serious, but also very hopeful. 
and my dad is just dad is just eagerly awaiting a reply from my mom. It's probably two seconds, but that was too much for me, and I hop over to my dad, pluck the ring out of the box, hop over to my mom, place it on the wrong finger, <laughs> look at my father, and say, we say yes. <laughs> 90 days later, they get married. Wow. My mom and I pack up all of our things, I say goodbye to all my friends, I say goodbye to my grandparents, and we both moved to North Carolina, where my dad had been the entire time. This is very much, as you can imagine, a recipe for disaster. Impulsive, unpredictable, very abrupt. And while there were many, many, many challenges that faced our family up ahead, I'm very proud to say that just last month, my parents celebrated 25 years. Oh. And we are the tightest and closest unit of three family that you could ever imagine. No secrets, no judgment, just a lot of honesty, a lot of humor, and a lot of vulnerability. And I'm finally in a place where I can empathize more with why my dad wasn't around and how he wasn't ready to be a nurturing father. And I know eight-year-old Benjamin was very caught up in this idea of a real family, but let it be clear that when it was just my mom and I, we were already a real family. My mom was and will always be mi primer hogar, my first home. I think that my family has kind of taught me that there's no real formula to this thing. You know, families can grow, they can dissolve, they can be chosen, they can be found. And I would really like to think that the three of us was granted a great opportunity to intentionally choose each other. I love my mom and dad, los quiero mucho, and I'm really grateful for red balloons that kind of make wishes come true. Aww. Aww.